Up until I switched to ZSH, I've been running the Starship Shell Prompt. So now that I've switched over, I thought, why don't I try out Spaceship and see what the original's like? So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this is Starship right here. So I showed a video of this, or I did a video of this, a few months back. And it's a really cool prompt. If you're using anything besides ZSH, then I would really recommend running Starship. It's a very, very cool minimalist prompt. It does pretty much everything you want it to do. If you even want to show stuff that's completely useless, like what Ruby version you're running or other things like that, you can get it to do that. But I tend to just disable all of that. And also like the way that it handles git branches and a couple other things like that. So let's actually go have a look at Spaceship, which is what Starship was actually inspired by. So this is the GitHub page for Spaceship. Let's have a look at it. So as you can see, it looks very, very similar. It's almost identical. The only thing different with this GIF is pretty much the fact that they're showing a different prompt symbol. So they're using an arrow instead of a whatever that sign is, greater than, whatever, greater than, that sounds right. So this also does far more than Starship actually did. So Starship, it has a lot of the features that Spaceship does, but it also has so many extras in Spaceship. So you can show like an Xcode version, Swift version, Elixir, Elm, all of this stuff. The things that Starship has are only like the main important stuff like PHP, Go, Ruby, Python, the things you would have on Linux. Whereas since Spaceship is used for ZSH, and I think ZSH has been made the default shell on macOS, there's also things in here that are sort of not really macOS exclusive. Like you can get Swift running on Linux, and you I don't know about Xcode. No, I think Xcode you're not going to. But because there's this extra stuff, there's also just extra things that you can configure. So as I said before though, I tend to just disable most of it, but let's actually have a quick look at it. So there's some other stuff in here. You can also show things like your battery level, the current version of Vimo that you're in, a time for whatever reason. And I don't actually use most of this stuff. I think most of it's kind of dumb. Maybe you like it on your terminal but or on your prompt, but I'm not a big fan of it. So before we jump into actually showing it though, make sure you have a powerline font installed if you want to be able to see those git symbols. So literally anything will work. They recommend something like Fira Code. I think I'm using... Hack Nerd Font Pro, that works. Use whatever you want, really. So let's actually have a look at my prompt. So as you can see in here, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll notice that it looks exactly the same as my Starship prompt did, and that's entirely on purpose. So I've basically customized it to look exactly the same because I, I like the prompt. I don't like all the extra features it comes with. I want a very minimalist prompt. So let's have a look at what the Bash version looks like. So as you can see, they are not only similar, they are completely identical. So you can see in my NeoFetch thing here that actually says what version of my shell I'm using. So the first one I had ZSH open. This one I have, it's supposed to say bash, but I'm actually running bash right now. I don't know why it's saying a different shell. That's weird. I was probably pulling from my environment variable, not from what current shell is running in the terminal. Anyway, bash is currently running within this part of the the thing right now. So as you can see, I don't have my syntax highlighting. So I've got them looking exactly the same. Maybe you want them different. Maybe you want to actually take advantage of the new spaceship features, the extra spaceship features. I don't really care about them though. So let's actually just have a look at what my configuration looks like. And then we can, I guess, jump around through there. So if I bring up my ZSHRC file, which is where you have to configure everything. So let's jump down to the spaceship part and let's see what settings I'm actually using. So, that's a bit too far down, I actually want to adjust the settings. So, as I said, I've disabled, I think, literally every single module. Like, all of this stuff, the Node, Ruby, Elm, Elixir, all of this stuff I have disabled because I don't really care about, like, the version number appearing on my prompt. If I want to know the version number, I have other methods to do that. It doesn't really affect me if it's there. So, I'll just move my webcam over so it's in a different spot. There we go. So, let's actually disable this stuff or delete these settings so I can show you what it looks like by default. So I'll bring up this. I have got a package.json file within my home directory. I don't remember why it's there. 
So I've got the NPM version right now. It also says that I am in via insert mode. It's using a different prompt character. So it's got an arrow and there's also, I think that's pretty much the only different stuff. There's obviously, it's gonna show like my Ruby version and things like that, but I don't have a Ruby project to show you that. But the one thing that you're probably gonna to wanna to disable if you're used to using a normal prompt is this extra line here. So to do that, you just go and re-add, I think it was this line right here. Let's just disable that one. I'm pretty sure it's the second one. Yeah, okay, so that, this line right here, so spaceship prompt separate line. I don't know why by default they add a line separator in there. I think it looks dumb. And this one right here, this other add new line, what that did is, so if we go, let's say LS and LS, as you can see, it puts a line break between the command output and the next prompt. I'm not a big fan of that either, so I'll just quit that again, bring up new uh, new prompt, and ls, ls. See, it doesn't put a line break in there. So you're probably more interested in some of the other stuff you can configure. So the other stuff for just getting the prompt looking like this, I've also got a space after my prompt symbol. So that is, what that basically does is, let's just change that. So the char suffix, let's change that to e, just so I can show you what it looks like. So I run that now, and as we can see, that puts a E character after my prompt character. So my prompt character is the greater than symbol, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. So I like that just being a space. I think by default it's a space, so I probably didn't need to set that. And then I'm changing from the arrow to that character there. So let's actually jump into the actual configuration because I'm, as I said, I'm basically just disabling everything. So let's look at the stuff you can do. So I would highly recommend having a look at this for yourself because I am not going to have time to go through everything that's here. There is so much that you can configure. So I'm just going to go through a little bit of it. And yeah, hopefully you guys can work out the rest because a lot of it's fairly similar. So once I've shown you like one or two, you should be able to work out the rest. I think my webcam's in the way, so I'll just disable that for a little bit. So you can change the prompt to add a new line to separate line, show a prefix, suffix, change what the suffix and all that is. You can change the symbol that your prompt has, all this stuff. You can show a time on your terminal for whatever reason. I don't know why you would want to do that. Let's just put that in see what it does. So I think that just shows you when that prompt was created. So if we set that to true, by default that's set to false sensibly. So open that up. Yeah, so this will just say, when the uh, the prompt was created. So it's a 11, 15, 40. Oh, wait, does that time update? No, no, it doesn't. Okay, I just, I'm just seeing things. So if I write LS now, now it'll show the current time and the current time and the current time. If you want to clock on your terminal or on your prompt, I guess that's a way to do it. I think it's kind of dumb, but hey, it's your system, do what you want. So, what else do we have in here that's kind of cool? Or remotely cool, I guess. So, you can modify the time, you can change the color of it. Pretty much everything you can display on your prompt, you can customize. So, what else do we have? You, you can, by default, the username is shown when it's not the same as the login name. So, when you're connected via SSH or when you're root. So, if you notice, it didn't actually say my login name. So, that's kind of cool. Maybe... You, if you do want that, then I guess you would have to manually put it in with the um, suffix or the prefix up here. Personally, I don't really care that it doesn't say my current user login because I'm the only user on this system. But if I'm logged in as root, then it'll say that I am the current root user. Or if I'm SSH into the system, it'll say that I'm SSH or it'll say whatever the, the user for that is called. I think it's just going to say SSH or something like that. I'm not sure. Same with showing the host name, it's only shown when you SSH into the system, so that's cool. This is probably the only one that I actually do show, and that is dir, so that shows what my uh, current directory is. This right here, so right now I'm in the home directory, if I cd into .cache, I'm in home slash .cache, so that's just a directory prompt, there's nothing too special about that. It's, kind of the stuff you've seen everywhere. So you can change that color, you can change the symbol for stuff that are only accessible by either other users or by the root user. 
Now, Git is the other one that I actually am using. So I didn't show you the Git stuff before. I, don't, I actually don't disable any of that. So if we CD into there, CD into my repos folder into, let's just go ST. So as we can see, it says that I have uh, changes that need to be committed. I believe that's what that is. Yes, that's changes that need to be committed. So if I was to commit those, then it would change the symbol to like an up arrow to say that I need to push them up to my remote and a couple of other symbols. Do I still have the page open? No, I don't. So if you look at the main GitHub page, it'll show you all of the different symbols, but you'll work them out pretty quickly by just playing around with Git and then also looking at what the symbols on the screen actually say. It becomes pretty intuitive very quickly. So I'm using all of the Git stuff here. I'm not disabling any of that, the Git branch, Git status. So am I using Git status? Yes, I am, because that's showing different symbols. That's showing all of these symbols, the modified, added, renamed, deleted, stayed, or stashed, unmerged, ahead, behind, and diverged. So this will show pretty much everything that you would care about for Git. I think it actually shows every single possible state that Git could be in. So even if you're just using it for that, which is pretty much the reason I disable basically everything else. I don't care about most of the other stuff, but the Git stuff that it adds actually is very, very useful. I just realized I had my webcam disabled and I was moving my hands around. Basically, I just use it for the Git stuff because I know that I can write a prompt to do that for me, but I don't really care. It's too much work to get it done. I think I had an old PS1 prompt that did basically all that for me, but I didn't really like the format for it. And this works about as well as you could possibly want. So if for whatever reason you're using Mercurial, there's also Mercurial bindings in here. So that's also cool. You don't see those too often. I don't know if there's any other source code stuff in here. No, it's just it's just Mercurial and Git, which is honestly more than you need. I don't know of any projects that use Mercurial. So I don't know. If you're one of those people that do, then that's cool. Maybe you want to use this prompt then. So the next stuff is just for things like your version numbers for different things you're using. So your NPM version, your Node version, your Ruby version, Elm, Alexa, Xcode, Swift. As I said, there's a lot of stuff. I'll just keep scrolling and you can see how much is in here. So let's get to something that's not a version number. I don't even know how much is in here. So I'm not going to even bother reading through those because they're all the exact same thing. Terraform. Oh, we also have ex execution time. So I do have this one enabled. So if we open this up, say we run like LF, for example, I leave that open for a couple of seconds and I quit that out. And then it says it took four seconds to run. So obviously with something that actually takes up your whole terminal like that, it's not going to be an exact execution time, obviously. But if you run like ls okay ls is too short maybe if you run something on like a bigger file it'll actually tell you how long it took it goes by second so if it's less than a second it's not going to show anything but i think it's cool to just have that bit of extra feedback there i don't really care about it too much i just think it's a nice addition so we also have things like showing the battery which i don't have disabled but i've literally never been able to get this module to work it didn't work on Starship. It doesn't work on Spaceship. I don't know if I'm just missing a dependency for it. I assume that it would use like ACPI, but I guess not. I don't know. It doesn't seem to work on my system. I've never actually seen it show anything. It could be because I have my laptop plugged in, but I can't see that being the reason why. I'm just going to try that right now, actually. Just open up a prompt. No, it, it just doesn't do anything. Okay, that's cool. So if you have any luck actually using that part of the prompt, then let me know. I've never been able to get it to work. I assume it's a dependency problem though, but I don't really care about it because I don't actually want to use it. You can also do things like show your current Vi mode. So this, I don't know if it just doesn't work. This is another one where I'm just not sure if it just doesn't work or not, because if I enable this, it just always says I'm in insert mode when I know that I'm in normal mode or I'm in visual mode. I don't know why it doesn't work. Let me know why it doesn't work. If you happen to know, I could be doing something wrong. But as I mentioned in my first ZSH video, I'm actually using a beam and a block to indicate whether I'm in insert mode or visual mode, which is much more true to actually how you would use Vi or Vim. So I prefer that method anyway. So I actually just disable Vi mode normally. Yeah, I'd, I don't have anything else to say about that. If you know why it's not working, then let me know. So you can show jobs. So this is if you 
run... Oh, so you can actually, like, put something like, I don't know, Vim as a background process sort of thing. I can't remember how you do it, but that will tell you you actually have programs lined up like that. So the last thing you can show in here is exit codes. I don't know if this was a thing you could do with Starship, but I've got this disabled right now because this is just the default behavior for it, but let's actually enable that. So true, and then just get rid of that line, don't need it. Okay, so what does that actually do? So let's run like LLS. Okay, it doesn't show anything like that because it didn't fail. Okay, so if you like cancel out a program with control C, then it'll give an exit code for that. That's cool. I don't really see much of a point for that, really, unless you're very interested in knowing what the exit codes for your different programs are. Maybe that's something that interests you. I thought it was going to be a bit more interesting than that, but I guess not. So I guess we can just delete that line. So I think that's pretty much everything for what you can do with Starship. I just said Starship. That's pretty much everything that you can do with Spaceship. They're pretty much the same prompt, but Spaceship just has more stuff you can do with it. So I know that I didn't actually like intricately go through everything. There's just so much to go over that I didn't really see a point to going really in depth to everything, especially because most of it is kind of just the exact same thing. So all of those different like show different version numbers, they're all the exact same section of options, but they'll just control a slightly different thing. So let me know what you think about this prompt because I'm a big fan of it. I actually really like this prompt. So actually one last thing, I didn't actually mention this early on. So if you want to get the prompt actually running, that's probably fairly important. So let's jump into the, the ZSHRC. So this is actually mentioned on the GitHub page. But what you have to do is write out this line right here. So auto load dash u prompt init semicolon prompt init and then prompt spaceship. I think you can also do it with other methods if you're using one of the plugin managers for for Z shell. So like oh my Z shell, Presto, Antigen, any of these. I think it might work slightly differently. But because I just installed it manually from the AUR, then I just chuck that line right at the bottom of my ZSHRC and that'll work as you would expect. So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything for this. So I didn't go over themes, but I don't run a theme. So if you want to work that out, then either let me know that you want to see a video on that or just have a look in the GitHub because it's mentioned like right here, I believe. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, let's end the video there. So if you liked this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see other videos like this, then subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm moving for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. Also just leave a comment letting me know that you want to see some stuff like this. I've got plenty of content available, but I'm always happy to add more stuff to the list of things that I've got to do. So down below, I've got my Discord. So if you want to chat with me, then that's the best place to go for that. I will respond to YouTube comments, but I'm more likely to actually get into a conversation on something like Discord. I've also got my library. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out because that's the only place outside of this platform I'm actually using. I've also got my support links down below. There's like five or six different ways you can go. If you don't feel like supporting the channel, obviously you don't have to do that, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my Twitter and my Mastodon, so if you want to get video updates, that's the best place to go for that, and yeah, I think that's pretty much everything for that. So also up on that corner, I've got the playlist there's videos in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And actually one last thing, one last thing before I go. So if you notice that the framing of this video is a little different, I've actually put my webcam above where my laptop is now on a stand. So let me know what you think about this. I know that most of the video I'm going to be staring like at my screen, so it's going to be a bit lower. Maybe, I don't know, I might do my videos on my like, actual external monitor, then it won't have that problem. I don't know, I'll think about the best way to do that. So if you've got any ideas for that, just let me know and I'll be happy to try them out. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now, so I'm out.